Now, the title of this video is ambitious, wouldn't you say? Millions upon millions of facts out there, and I say that we have the most interesting ones? Of course we do! We're covering everything from historical dreadlocks to dirty deals with killer whales. This is a mind-expanding rundown of stories from across the globe. I'm Mike with List25, and here are the 25 most interesting facts in the world. Pretty much guaranteed. 25. The longest webcam stream in history. Can you believe there's a webcam stream that started in 1994 that is still going today? It's the Fog Cam at San Francisco State University, but it isn't exactly in 4K, hence the name. It was the idea of former student Jeff Schwartz, who one day saw live footage of a coffee maker in Cambridge, England, which incredibly was the world's very first live stream. Schwartz and staffer Dan Wong then took things to new heights by aiming a camera at unsuspecting people on campus. 24. Triangular Tinkle You all know what a triangle is, right? A tiny coat hanger-like thing with a surprisingly powerful tinkling noise used in an orchestra? 1855 saw the first recorded appearance for this pint-sized instrument in Europe. We've apparently known about it since the 14th century, though it was a few hundred years before music lovers really took notice. They're linked to the Turkish Janissary, military types who served in the Ottoman Empire. Think of that the next time you're laughing your ass off at a lone man holding a triangle. 23. Oldest Surviving Banks Banks. Love them or hate them, there's no getting away from them. They've been part of human civilization for a long time. But how long, exactly? While the oldest bank in the world that's still standing today is Banca Monte de Pace de Siena. Located in Tuscany, Italy, it first opened its doors in 1472. Its mission was reportedly to help the poor and needy. When was the last time you saw a bank do that? While I'm thinking that it's probably not as generous today, it's still the fourth largest of its kind in the country. 22. Ancient Dreadlocks Dreadlocks are firmly established in the history of human hair. We don't know precisely how far back they go, but the story behind them is fascinating and also concerning. For starters, the word dreadlocks has a dark connection to colonialism in the 19th century. The British reportedly found the hairstyle dreadful, and so an iconic yet awkward word was born. And the first ever mention of them dates to between 2500 and 1500 BCE. The ancient Minoan civilization in Greece is also believed to have one of the very first depictions. From Maori warriors to Rastafarians, the style is found across a variety of cultures. We just don't know who started it all. 21. Colossal Clover You've heard of the clover plant, which typically has three or four leaves. The numbers can go higher, but the greater the leaves, the rarer the clover. So it's astonishing that one lucky individual found one with 56 leaves. This honor fell to Japanese STEM studier Shigeo Obara, who spotted the amazing piece of greenery in 2009. 56 leaves? How did it even stay upright? 20. Sealed with a puss. If somebody Swedish signs off a message with puss, then don't be baffled. Puss is actually their word for kiss. So they obviously like you a whole bunch. Puss puss is even better. Less affectionate, however, is the Swedish kiss. Yes, they actually have a word kiss in their dictionary. Only it doesn't mean a smooch. It's what the Swedes say when they want to go potty. <laughs> kiss kiss? Well, I did drink a lot of water today. 19. Game Boy in Space Nintendo's Game Boy released in 1989, and it was a pocket-sized console designed to be played anywhere. One man who took that to the extreme was Alexander A. Serebrov. Cosmonaut Serebrov brought his Game Boy along for his trip to the Mir space station in 1993. This made it the first console to go beyond the stars. After circling the planet reported 3,000 times, the Game Boy and Serebrov went back to Earth. Bottoms of New York later auctioned the handheld device in 2011, selling it for a cool $1,220. 18. Squeak of the Ninja Need to protect your home against ninjas? The Japanese aristocracy relied on so-called nightingale floors. The wooden planks would chirp up like birds if an assassin came near. They looked nice, but probably sounded quite annoying. Bad if you're trying to relax, perfect if someone's trying to sneak in and murder you. 17. 
liquefying caterpillars. What happens when a caterpillar cocoons itself before emerging as a beautiful butterfly? The truth is actually complex and possibly vomit inducing. Inside the caterpillar's body are things called imaginal discs. Imaginal relates to imago, or the adult stage of the life cycle. These discs exist on a cellular level. In other words, they're very, very small. The caterpillar needs to access them in order to metamorphosize. How does it do this? By digesting itself. Enzymes are released in the cocoon which melt the old body and usher in the new one. Gooey and gory. It's kind of like the first Groot. The second Groot's not really Groot, unfortunately. Sad. 16. The Death of Jack Daniel. One of Whiskey's biggest names, Jack Daniel, died from gangrene poisoning in 1911. Not a pleasant way to go, but how did he wind up poisoned in the first place? If you listen to legend, then his infection started with a safe in the distillery office. Daniel would apparently kick it when the numbers to the combination escaped him. This violent act had fatal consequences when Daniel damaged his digit. That's a fun sentence to say. Say it with me now. Daniel damaged his digit. <laughs> infection and death swiftly followed. It's a good story, but it actually doesn't seem to hold water. Or whiskey, for that matter. 15. Hitler's Favorite Song One of the most evil men in history liked to whistle a tune as he went about his gruesome business. So, what did Hitler like to whistle as he tried to conquer the world? Being German, Wagner was definitely on his Nazi playlist, though it was probably tough to perform by whistling. Which may explain why the simpler sounds of Who's Afraid of the Big Bad Wolf and When You Wish Upon a Star were often heard emanating from his skinny megalomaniac lips. I'm trying to get past that mustache. 14. Puma Power Did you know that pumas, cougars, and mountain lions are all the same species? These classic four-pawed American predators come under the title of Puma Conqueror. What they're called depends on where you are in the Americas. For example, Puma is associated with Latin America and Cougar with North America. And if you're wondering what Puma Conqueror means, it's a name referring to one coloring, which really makes sense because Pumas can be different in color. 13. Zugzwang. Gesundheit. No, this actually isn't a sound you make when you sneeze. It's a crazy catch-all description relating to an impossible situation. Specifically, this German word comes from the world of chess. It dates back to the mid-19th century. Who knows, with chess in the public eye, thanks to Netflix's The Queen's Gambit, we might see Zugzwang make a big comeback. It just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Zugzwang. 12. Where does the word white come from? The word white is actually believed to go back thousands of years to my arm right here. It's, it's very, very white. Actually, the ancient Proto-Indo-European language resulted in the word quintos, which was then filtered through the later Proto-Germanic tongue. Quintos then became quitats, though I should point out that this is all academic guesswork. When Anglo-Saxons landed in England from Germany, we began to see the Old English word huit. This gave rise to the spelling of white as we know it today. Though history has shown some intriguing variations. There was the ancient Roman albus, meaning plain white, and candidus, bright white. Also, the expression black and white is thought to be from the late 14th century, or the Middle English period. 11. Secondhand Sorrow The image of sending unwanted clothes to Africa is usually seen as a good thing. Some over there, however, would beg to differ. A BBC report from 2018 highlighted the opposition to imported and pre-loved items. The Rwandan government argues that secondhand clothes mean the local garments and textile industries can't compete. They managed to get a ban a couple of years earlier, which had a dramatic effect on international relations. The ban has also impacted on Rwandans looking for affordable clothing. 10. Liechtenstein and Haiti How permanent is a country's flag? In the case of Liechtenstein, Western Europe, not so much. Adjustments need to be made after the 1936 Olympic Games. You see, their flag and that of Haiti were too similar. Both had red and blue coloring, for important and historic reasons. When it became clear that the flags could be mistaken for each other, Liechtenstein took action. In 1937, a crown became part of the design. You can't miss it, it's in the top left in a prominent position. 
By the way, uh, in case you were wondering, the red indicates fire and the blue is the sky. Nine, Rudolph the UV-nosed reindeer. There's more to reindeer than dashing through the snow and locking antlers. It's thought they can pick up ultraviolet light, an ability that sets them apart from other mammals. How can they do this? One explanation is that a creature needs to have its wits about it when out in the snow. Because everything is bright white, that makes things like predators and food tough to spot. The reindeer's eyesight has apparently evolved accordingly. The scientific study, which appeared in 2023, casts new light on Rudolph and his eagle-eyed friends. <laughs> Rudolph the reindeer had a nose. It's a great video if you have not seen it. It's amazing. Eight, skipper butterfly versus horse. Butterflies may not look that fast as they flutter around. However, it turns out the skipper butterfly is quite the speed freak. Their wing muscles allow them to fly well over 30 miles an hour, and the maximum recorded speed is 37, which places it ahead of a racehorse. A possible reason behind this surprising stat lies in the skipper's status as a butterfly slash moth. It certainly seems to have the edge over its fragile looking pals. Seven, holy Roman punishment. <sighs> Nowadays, a lot of people don't bother to vote, but that wasn't an option during the times of the Holy Roman Empire which existed between 800 and 1806 in Europe, they took their democracy pretty seriously. At least if you were higher up the food chain and responsible for electing the Holy Roman Emperor. You had a strict period of 30 days in which to cast your vote for a preferred candidate. Should you fail to do so, a punishment was meted out. Not only were you banned from leaving the city, you also had a special non-voter diet of bread and water. Six. Ice cream headache. The sound of an ice cream truck must be one of the most reassuring noises in history. I didn't live with any kids, so I never had the ice cream man come around my neighborhood, so I guess I wouldn't know. No wonder Irish cops figured it would be good for quelling a gang of angry teenagers back in 2010, when the PSNI, the Police Service of Northern Ireland, found themselves set upon by a drunken gang, they played ice cream style music over their Tannoy system. This actually stopped the youth throwing bottles, so you'd think it was a bright idea. Sadly, when authorities heard about the move, they didn't agree. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, my neighborhood growing up, I know what an ice cream truck sounds like. My neighborhood growing up was just like me and a lot of elderly people, so the ice cream man in my entire childhood never came near my house. I think a couple blocks over. Never near my house. Halloween too. My entire childhood, we had one Halloween, one trick-or-treater. <laughs> Five, sunflowers versus radiation. The Fukushima disaster devastated Japan and shocked the world. The combination of an earthquake and tsunami led to a power failure that had a catastrophic effect on the nuclear power station at Fukushima Prefecture, Northeast Japan. Around 80,000 needed to evacuate. There were no fatalities at the time. However, the exposure to radiation led to at least one death that we know of. The surrounding environment was heavily polluted. Probably the last thing you'd think of was planting sunflowers. Yet, that was precisely what Shinji Honda wanted to do in the aftermath. His thinking was that the plants would basically absorb the radiation and then potentially clean the soil. There was a certain amount of skepticism and enthusiasm for the idea. Approximately 10,000 packets of sunflower seeds were sold locally to encourage the project. Kuyu Abe, a Buddhist monk, also planted sunflowers to make up for contaminated crops and the damage to the natural beauty of the area. I have a fun fact about this one. Uh, a bunch of elderly Japanese people volunteered to clean up because they realized that they're old, so by the time the radiation actually would affect them, they'd be long gone. So they absolutely volunteered to clean up. That's awesome. Way to go, old Japanese people. Way to go. Four, Norwegian prison guard scheme. A prison is typically associated with harsh regimes and a tough relationship between guards and inmates. Travel to Halden Prison, 200 miles to the south of Oslo, by car, and you'll find a different way of doing things. They've implemented something called dynamic security around the place. It isn't as action-packed as it sounds, though. The guards and inmates have more of a social interaction, where they take part in activities together not to mention sharing meals. This theoretically leads to a more pleasant environment and more well-adjusted prisoners. Three, whales hunting whales. 
In the early 20th century, a curious and bizarre story emerged from the pages of an Australian newspaper. The fishermen of Edentown in New South Wales relied on orcas to help them catch their prey of baleen whales. A long-established connection between man and marine mammal meant that the orcas would herd their unsuspecting brothers toward the coast. Men in boats were then alerted by a male orca who did the seagoing equivalent of jumping up and down and waving his hands. That was the signal that the baleen whales were ready to be slaughtered. This helpful orca was nicknamed Old Tom, which makes their tails seem cozier, even though it's pretty bloodthirsty. Did the orcas expect anything in return? <laughs> you bet their sweet tail fin they did. Lips and tongues hacked from baleen corpses were provided as a reward. Gee, thanks guys, you really, really shouldn't have. Two, surprise, you're eating cyanide. An apple a day really doesn't keep the doctor away. Small traces of cyanide exist in the pips, so you should really spit them out. Crushing the seeds reportedly releases the deadly poison and a large amount of seeds would spell danger for anybody. The same applies for the pits in cherries, peaches, and apricots. Uh, you know, good luck trying to eat those though because they're seriously tough. Either way, it's kind of alarming to hear there's any cyanide involved in the first place. <laughs> Nature's bounty my butt. One, extreme ironing. If you see a group of people out in windswept conditions with ironing boards, then don't call the nearest psychiatric hospital. They're simply taking part in the wild sport known as extreme ironing. This has existed since the late 20th century and is a great way to blow off steam, literally. If someone ever collars you saying they've got an idea up their sleeve and asking if you'd like to take part in an Ironman competition, then you'll know what they're talking about. You can even do it underwater, which has to be seen to be believed. Well, at least you'll be entertained watching the planet's weirdest sport, so why not enjoy the show before getting on the phone to the authorities and telling them where they can pick up these clearly deranged individuals? So, what is your favorite fact? Let me know in the comments below. Also, don't forget to share, like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and check out our social medias, including personal ones, links in that description. And if you're wanting to discover more mind-boggling facts, this time from beyond our planet, then check out our video on strange things found in space. Just click on the link right here and you'll see what I mean, and I will see you soon for another list. We do every Monday through Friday, baby. I'll see you. I don't know when this one's coming out. <laughs>